about damn time. Yeah, it's a long awaited day. Yeah. 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 This is. It's all Irish all day. The top 10 whiskeys for advanced Irish whiskey drinkers. Yes, that's true. Now, here's my qualifier. Yeah. That is that when you talk about advanced Irish whiskey, I'm not thinking the same way I think advanced Irish or Scotch whiskey. Yeah. Because what most people mean when they say advanced Scotch is the more peaty, aggressive, some of the rougher stuff, sure, right? Sure, sure. So it's really hard to find that kind of thing we in asked, Irish whiskey. We asked our community mm -hmm. of thousands of whiskey lovers, the whiskey tribe, the magnificent bastards, what are the most complex, nuanced, yes, interesting Irish whiskeys? Doesn't have to be challenging. Right. What are the favorite ones in our community? This has more to do with the complexity of the taste. Yes. And how you have to kind of understand what's going on in Irish whiskey to find yep. the different layers. Yep. Yep. Hope and we're, we're going to start. <laughs> we're going to start with Conmar. Where's your hair for hot? No, this is a discovery video. Okay. People are going to be finding this video and right. having no idea Fine. why Fine. I'm wearing Fine. a sh wig. Fine. I do think we, we need something, though. Okay. I do think we need something. We need to summon like an actual Irishman. Oh. Because we're just a couple of ass hats. <laughs> Speak for yourself. We don't know our asses from our elbows. I, I know both elbows and asses. <laughs> I think we need a legit Irishman okay. who has lived his life in Ireland amongst these glorious whiskeys. Is this just because you're worried about my pronunciation problems? It is embarrassing. <laughs> I have a certain standard of quality and, yeah. ac and accuracy yeah. that I try to maintain That's what you're so in every one of for. these episodes. Professionalism. Professionalism, right. Okay. So, Lee, uh, we need to summon an Irishman. You ready? How do you Re summon an Irishman? Oh, oh, sh**. I forgot, I forgot my mooch necklace. Dude, we have to, we have to rely on your summoning powers. I don't even know, I've never summoned an Irishman before. Well, here we go. See if you can do it. <laughs> what do you do to Oh, I know, I know, I know. Of all the money that ever I've had, no, I have no. spent. It's the parting class. That's it. how it's you just, summon an Irishman. I'm going to help you out. This is embarrassing okay. for you. Okay. You do need to put on the hair for help. It's going to give you that extra. Just can I take it off that, after we get the Irishman that, just here? Just that extra little bit of power. Okay. The extra little bit. My understanding was of that, like, power. if you're in Texas, like Pee Wee Herman said, and you go, the stars at night are big and bright. Everyone goes. Deep in the heart, and so right. son an Irishman, you sing the parting glass. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, go get that f***ing thing, <laughs> <laughs> and make sure people see the wax strip, Daniel. Yeah, look at that wax strip. Oh, it's so oh, it's so cringy. This is disgusting. It's just, uh. <laughs> oh, I touched it again. <laughs> Every time I try to adjust, I touch the try drink. again wax strip. Try again. I believe you could summon now. Of all the money that ever I. I am a rambling Irish man. It's Terry Dolan. You were just magically in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, I was on the flight home and suddenly. This <laughs> Come on up here, Terry. Oh, no. oh Terry needs a glass. Terry doesn't need a glass. Go. Terry's going to make sure we pronounce things correctly. Can I, right. uh, and since that you were summoned with the, the Hair for Hobbit's helm, yeah. do I have your permission to take off the Hair for Hobbit's helm? I like how you look at me. Oh, like dude, why did you look so. at Rex? <laughs> okay, Terry. I don't know if we're friends anymore. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Right. His only you're... response was, eh, yeah, fair enough. As long as you're pouring the whiskey, we're fine. Okay, first things first. Yeah. We're going to go for Connemara. Yep. Yeah, Pronunciation? Yeah. How do you yeah, say it, Terry? I'll go Connemara. 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 This thing of Irish whiskey, you want to get it over and done as quick as possible. Connemara. <laughs> Connemara. Get it there. Yeah. All right. Just, not like <laughs> Texans just draw it out. Just no, say it. No, yeah, that's the problem. All those Texans. Right. Oh, I forgot the dance light. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised you were able to be summoned without the dance yeah, light. Yeah, that's just a little extra flair. So, so uh, is, this, is this in any particular order, this list? No, or? no, no. I, I sort of, uh, yes, I did them in a certain order, but... But not in the order that they were voted in, in terms of no. the most votes. Okay. No, I kept them random for that. So no particular order. Yes. Yeah, so Kanmara yes. is a Cooley Distillery, owned by Kilbagan. Right. So and uh, that we're going to keep minimum history to minimum and just go for tasting notes. Okay. It's one of the only peated Irish whiskeys. Oh. Now back in the day, all whiskey in Ireland, as far as I know, was likely peated just like it was in Scotland. Yeah. It was only in the more modern era that they started to do unpeated. And a lot of that had to do with the English taxing peated malt or taxing malt, yeah, yeah. and then you had unmalted barley. It is interesting on the nose because there's so few peated Irish whiskeys. 
I would smell that and think, oh, scotch. It's a very different kind of peat, though, because it's such a clean, sweet, yes. fruity peat. Clean, yeah. sweet, fruity. It still has all, all the characteristics of an Irish whiskey. Yeah, I don't yeah. suggest that that's a great entry into peated whiskey in general, because it's just so <sighs> clean and refreshing. I yeah. totally agree. I've used, uh, yeah, it's a gateway. It's a gateway drug. No. No, I still get all the classic Irish notes of the green apple. Yeah. And the kind of light fruit notes and the buttery biscuit notes. But then, it's almost like you're sitting in a field of flowers. And I read somebody said this, I thought, ah, oh, it's perfect. It's almost like sitting in a field of flowers next to the sea, and there's a little bit of a campfire smoke drifting through mm. the field. Lacy peat. <laughs> it's like a peat with doilies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm taking this thing off. I think that is worthy of... Because the Irishman's here now? An advanced Irish whiskey. It's very complex. I it's think very, it is, too. It's nuanced. Uh, and in terms of, like, a lighter end peat, but it doesn't, it's not weak. Right, no, right. It's no, still no. there. It's just Dragon all the high, the high end notes. So we're gonna move into Writer's Tears. Okay. Now Writer's Tears. See, this is so interesting. Is a product that Writer's Tears made the list. It did actually. Tealing made the list more than anything. Okay. Uh, but there are a lot of different tealing products, and Writer's Tears is one of the Walsh. Uh, is actually no, sorry. Writer's Tears is not tealing. Writer's Tears is Walsh who makes. Uh, Writer's Tears, Irishman, Okay. and... Wait, wait, did you just smell the water? <sighs> I was gonna see if it still had the peat smell. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, now, as you're pulling out the Writer's Tears, the, the reason why this was very surprising to me... Mm-hmm. Because I remember this being one of the earliest whiskeys we ever re reviewed on this channel. Yeah. And I was underwhelmed. May, hopefully my palate has advanced. Your palate's more advanced now, We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. Because this bottle's donated by Brad Whittington, by Brad the way. Brad Whittington. You, are we Magnificent Bastard? Nah, but just... But, but this, he paid. He helped donate to bring that into the Academy. You... I knew, so, I knew you too first, well, Brad. When we first found this bottle... You're too much of a bastard. They didn't have any distribution in the U.S. Right. And so we actually had to buy a case of it from a shop in Dublin in order to get them to ship it over to us. I want to know... And it was $80 a bottle because of all the shipping and everything. Okay, so this being... Voted up the advanced Irish whiskeys list, mm -hmm. and I remember this being specifically simple. Yeah, in my earliest days of, of whiskey tasting. Now this is a mix of pot still and single malt. Okay. Right now, pot mm -hmm. still uh, meaning there's some unmalted barley in it, and usually single malt is uh, well, it could still be unmalted. They're different styles. Single malt's more traditional. It's probably going to be all malted barley. What say you, Irishman? There's a little coffee in this for me too, though. That's a, I'm getting a little coffee, but it's quite underwhelming apart mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. You're wrong, tribe. <laughs> so saith the No, Irish I think it's the taste that yeah, brings out some of the yeah. character. That's the nose is, is simple and pretty, but the taste brings out like a milk chocolate kind of note to me. That's something I often find of Irish whiskey. Sometimes the nose is quite underwhelming and quite flat, and then you get into it and it's very rich, and it's kind of almost a surprise. Mm -hmm. I totally so, agree with that. So I'm getting that, that classic um, buttered biscuit note. But the oak is showing up in the taste, too. The honey. Which means there's a little age to this. Now they don't tell you how. It's 40% though. Mm-hmm. It's 40%. That number always leaves me concerned, but it could be best at 40%. We don't know. Usually is it though? I don't know. But, but, yeah. I don't now know. they have a redhead version where it's finished in sherry casks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting too. So an advanced palette. On the nose, you're right. They're not gonna pick out anything amazing. Yep. I'm just getting the classic butter and the honey and maybe you said like a coffee nut or something? Maybe a little There's chocolate. a little something in there. Maybe a little Now we'll tell you that almond. Jim Murray, little, remember little, the little, guy? Little, little chocolate what? Maybe a little chocolate and almond. And, and yeah, chocolate yeah. Almond. See, oh, yeah, same thing. Milk chocolate. chocolate and almonds. Almonds, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, remember Jim Murray, the guy who writes the whiskey bible? Yeah. And who rated Crown Royal best in the world at one point? <laughs> um, he said, this is one of those hundred whiskeys to try before you die. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad whiskey. He felt very strongly yeah. about it. I'm looking for complexity, though. Yeah. And I think there's some complexity. I think there's some complexity. There's multiple things going you on. You think you're too complex for this? Or I there's, think... There's complexity on the taste, but not so much on the nose. Yes, I, I agree. agree. I am so much of an exotic creature that it's just it's just uh, not enough for my palate. We're doing a, a tin wh Irish whiskey blend here. Oh, we're dumping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a plane to catch. Yeah. All right, so Dunville PX. This is a Northern Ireland. This is uh, Belfast Disto uh, Distillery. Eckenville? Actually, it's Eckenville. Eckenville. Yeah, yeah. So Eckenville Distillery, Northern Ireland. They're doing a 10-year-old single malt Irish whiskey that's finished in Pedro Jimenez cask. So it's a port cask finished Irish I whiskey. I think this is actually a sourced whiskey from... It is a there. sourced whiskey. And I think... Cooley, possibly? I think they're also getting it from Cooley. But I, am, I could not figure that out. 
So I've done a, I did a lot of looking up things. Did you and, say sherry? Uh, yeah, Pedro Menez. Yeah. And man, you can smell it immediately. It yep. has that. Um, what's weird to me is when you get Irish whiskey mixed with some of the wine cask finishes, yeah. you get this weird medicinal note that shows up that doesn't normally show up. And it's almost like cleaning products. It does, no, it it does is, combine, yes. yeah, in that uh, it's not unpleasant. But to me, you know when you go into a restroom and they have the fake, uh, like, mountain breeze stuff spraying into the air to make the bathroom not smell yes. like yeah. shit? It's like, it's like you did that with sherry, where you wanted a sherry flavor, but it's, it's mixed with cleaning products to get the air clean. Now, of the few that we've tried, how many have you had just so off far, the shelf in Ireland? None. None, <laughs> none so, far. so far. Okay. Now, is, or is that because it just never looked interesting, or because I, we actually have a better selection yeah. of you? Well, both. Um, yeah? I would tend to be gravitate toward more interesting scotches first. And then uh, I, picked, I picked a few bottles yeah. of Irish up, but tend to be the, the big heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that Ireland, uh, there's often times it's easier to get rare Irish whiskey in America than it is in Ireland. Yeah. Hmm. They, uh, which is interesting because at one point, in order to try to help the economy and make it Irish first, they actually placed a huge tax burden on exported Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. And what that did was it left all this room for scotch to just take over the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now they're trying to fix that, I think. That, if you like sherry, that's gonna not leave you hanging. Oh, that lingers. Yeah. That is all of the shiny grain spirit mixed with the sweet fruit finish. Mm. It's like a fruit roll-up. That slight waxy taste to a fruit roll-up. I can buy that. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of the... Not strawberry. It's like the artificial strawberry. Yeah, that's what I mean. All these artificial notes. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. I think it's coming from grain whiskey, which makes me think that, uh, and I couldn't find this, but it makes me think that they're not using uh, pot still. Yeah, I'm I don't getting, know. I'm not getting a savory butter from that. I mean, it is yeah. a single malt. It has that pepperness of a, a high grain whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But they but they're calling it a single malt. But usually the grain whiskey means they just ran it through column stills instead of pot stills. And it's a lot easier to get your hands on. Okay. Because uh, you can make a lot more of it faster. So I'm wondering if that is even though it's single malt. I'm wondering if it's a if it's a column stilled. No, where in the street is actually when Eckersville starts producing whiskey, this brown's going to die. So hmm. really uh, picking up. All right. It's 46, oh, interesting. It's 46%. Okay. Six percent. And and because we have an Irishman here, he can tell us the word on the street. The word on the in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your... There we go. All right, we're moving on, and we're moving on to Dingle. <laughs> Did you pronounce that correctly? Close enough. Yeah. Close enough. Wait, how can it's you mispronounce fun. Dingle? When you get to that region of Ireland, the accents become very odd, and you uh, it anyway. So, okay. Uh, dingle, yeah. How would you pronounce it? I'd just say Dingle. That's okay, see? But again, get over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give your shit. It's less opportunity yeah, to get it wrong exactly. when you just, just like put it, put it out there quickly and walk away. All right. Yeah. No, I get. I, I'm all. I'm all for that. All right. All right. So here we go. Now this one I'm kind of excited about. Up here this is also. I really love the bottle shape on this. Yeah. Um, this is batch two from the Dingle Whiskey Distillery, and that means this was one where they married together sherry. Uh, and bourbon cask finishes, and the sherry that did both Pedro Menez and Oloroso. Okay. So two different kinds of sherry finishes and a bourbon cask finish. Interesting. All in one single malt Irish release. That is a beefy looking bottle. Isn't it? I dig oh, it. Oh, wow. I dig that. I'm getting a much more of a caramel on the nose of this than I typically yeah. do. Oh man, this is musty. Yes. Yeah, this is like farm barnyard musty. That is interesting. Wow, so I'm not getting the classic. No, this buttery, is nothing like the buttery biscuit. Anything we've tried so no, far. That is interesting. I'm getting a honey now. This goes caramel, it goes honey. This is definitely sweet. This makes me think of a farm. Yeah, the like, the, like harvested grain and, and barnyard animal like and. A dusty caramel and honey. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm just going off the smell still. No, no, no. I'm, still, all, I'm all up in it. I'm still getting citrus on the taste, but it's like lemon. Not the bitterness, though. No, there's no bitterness. Yeah. It is zest. Yeah, yeah. Little, little lemon zest and then heavy vanilla. Mm. But the nose is totally different. The nose, the mustiness in the nose doesn't show up in the taste at all. Yeah. No, I really like it. You said there was a bourbon influence? There was a, mm -hmm. a bourbon? You can definitely tell there's some old bourbon. That's the vanilla. Uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, when you get heavy common. vanillas in yeah. scotch or an Irish whiskey, you're, you're getting bourbon cask. Yeah, you can tell. That's been a spin around the block in a few different... Wow, that really lingers. It has multiple things going on there. It's it's a sweet whiskey, definitely. 
quite oily too. Yeah, oh, this is maybe my favorite so far. Yeah, no, I, I uh, this has been. A, I don't have I had this before. Have we ever done this? No, I was afraid. This was one of the ones I was afraid I couldn't get. Okay, and it showed up on the list, but it was mostly from people not in America. Oh. And so I was like, I never even heard of that one. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had to look it up, and then our friends uh, brought us a bottle from their uh, trip to Ireland, hmm. and so I was able to do the video. We are on to one I'm kind of excited about. Teeling took the cake for the most references on the list in general. Okay, this is one of my favorites too. Yeah, oh. and Teeling the Stealer. Now, now they were young enough that most Teeling you're trying right now is sourced, um, but they are starting to do stuff. Yeah. So, um, Teeling uh, is sort of like High West where they specialized in sourcing and then doing interesting finishes or yeah, yeah, yeah. finding special casks and doing things with yeah. them. Sure. And so there are actually two Teelings in our list. So this is what we do. And we're gonna do one of them This right is now. what we do. We need to go through the 30 tealings. <laughs> right? What time is it? No, yeah, we're good. Dude, we're, take a look at that. Yeah, you could knock out a donkey with that thing. Yeah. This is quite a special bottling, isn't it? It is. This is the Revival 15-year-old tealing. Okay. But you're saying even if people don't get this tealing, mm -hmm. tealing, just the generic... Just tealing in general. Yeah. Okay, that, that actually... Now, got, uh, this is finished in Muscat bottles. Muscat? Barrels. It's a dessert wine. Okay, Mus all right, sure. Well, it's actually a grape, but... Again, it's very delicate in the nose. It is, it's yeah. Very little, it's giving very delicate you, you get the sense that... I'm starting to find light, milky coffee in a lot of Irish whiskeys these days. Mm. Milk, like coffee with a lot of cream. Yeah. Oh, I can see right? that, yeah. So, you know... So that it's more cream than coffee in the nose. The, the candies, the, the coffee candies we yeah. get at Trattoria Lucina. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, very sweet, more vanilla with a hint of coffee. Yep. No, there's some kind of... Oh, Some okay, so the fruit. taste is way more subtle than the nose. The nose has rich complexity. The taste is nice and sweet and round. It but, unfolds, but the taste though. doesn't... The moment it hits you, it's really light and bright, and then it just unfolds and becomes like much more buttery and savory. Yeah, and yeah. And mostly yeah. buttery yeah. and savory, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some whiskeys you'll take a sip, and the very first moment, the very first flavor is it's just that, you know, throughout the entire thing. This. It's switching it up. It's mm. it's it's unfolding, and then it's just uh, drifting down. It's got an earthy aftertaste. And to you're it left too. with yeah. Speaking of the finish, you say earthy, earthy. Well, and by earthy, I don't mean dirt. I mean like vegetation and okay, well, green but, earth, but, right? But not, but not, not shying away from the sweetness. Right. Yeah. After having a taste, not I'm bitter. Starting, I'm starting to get like a buttered toast on the nose. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Moving on, because there's too many good things. You can finish that. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so a lot of slurred words. Glendola, huh? Glendola, Glendola. I would with a K sound on the end or yeah. just nothing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Because oh, okay, in yeah. Scotch there wouldn't be right. So Glendalock. Yeah. All right, Glendalock. Thank goodness Terry is here. All right. <laughs> you have to shut it all down. Yeah. This is the Porter cask finish. They worked with the Five Lamps Brewery in Dublin. Now remind me what Porter is. It's a beer. Oh yeah. Dark beer. So porter, porter just need to be the stronger form of a stout. Yeah. Before like the working man, the, the working man yeah. had a porter after Good working. Good blue collar beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now they put it in bourbon casks for six years, and then they moved it to porter barrels for another year. Mm -hmm. So it's seven years old with a full year. I am in porter casks. I still am surprised at how the scotches and Irish whiskeys. How light they are after over a decade. Well, you know the temperature is so much more moderate, right? And the used barrels. Okay, we were having. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen me? <laughs> we were having a lot of Texas whiskeys over the weekend, and these things are like three years old, and, and they look dark as coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> way darker than this. Now this one, this one's rich on the nose. This is maybe of all of them the most dark rich for me. Dark rich. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't taste like the light floral well, Irish. It tastes a little with, darker. Within me. the context of Irish, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still Irish Dark whiskey. for Irish. There's no question this is Irish whiskey, but it headed towards plums instead of towards the lighter fruits. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I like it. Is that a spearmint finish? Yeah. It is. It's minty. It's a minty finish. Like a... That's good, though, but it's yeah. like a chocolate mint. Mm. Yes. Yeah! Wow, what a weird finish for an Irish whiskey. See, none of these are anything like what people think of when they're like, oh, I'll take a Jameson 
Or yeah. uh, I'll take a, you know, fill in the blank. That is interesting. I've had a few stout finish and porter finished whiskey, but I've never had that, you know, like a freshly poured pint. Yeah. That sort of smell, that toasted sort of barley. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It really leaps out. Oh, I really love that. That's that is really nice. Good. So the Jameson did a stout edition, but all it served it to do was make it even creamier. Yeah. This which, one, the which, porter edition, which is wonderful. I actually keep the Jameson stout at my house yeah, like as it. just a go-to, it's, and it's, I absolutely enjoy it. It's a really nice background whiskey. We yes. talk about hero whiskeys, we yeah. talk about background whiskeys. But this is a porter cast, this is not background. No. Yeah. This is a feature whiskey, all yeah, day. Yeah. There's like a jam or jelly in there, I can't quite place yeah. which fruit it is. It's like plum or something in that region. Maybe even blackberry. Yes. Because blackberry has a spiky note yes. to it. Man, our people have not led us astray on this Good. video. Okay. We're on to red breast. Oh, you son of a bitch. List style sherry cask finished. <laughs> yeah, this got voted in. Where's your glass? So, Jeez. as... She can't be trusted, this guy. What is your uh, opinion of red breast? Because here in the States, wildly popular yeah, amongst whiskey drinkers. Uh, and my opinion is it's super, super popular because if you like the iconic Irish whiskey buttered biscuit. Was it but like rich, a, not like grain a, thin like, like Jameson. A, yeah, like a shortbread cookie that's mm -hmm. really deep and savory. That has it for days. Yeah. And just red breast yeah. in general. Oh, I love red breast, and it is like the step up from any sort of baseline Jemison or Bushmills or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Red breast, the first stop. Yeah, yeah. you want it to be yeah. like classic, but also super just. Oh, there's always a richness to red breast. Yes, yes, yeah. yes that's it, what it is. It, it's has a, it has a wow factor with the richness. Now, for me, the sherry cask finish just puts a little bit of jam on the yeah. on the biscuit. Yeah, just a little bit of the, a little bit of a sugary jam. Oh, come on! So just, 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 just burp, burp, burp. I'm just gonna sit this down. is nine to twelve years we're old. Hit, we're gonna pause on this. We're just gonna sit down <laughs> and finish the bottle. Just appreciate this moment. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's all jam. That is all but jam all it, day. Get your you get your biscuit. You do, and then you and get the shortbread butter, and then you get the jam on the butter. Yeah, but it's very. Jam. Oh, yeah. It's like someone went a little extra heavy with the jam. Yeah. Right. Like this is not a poor household. Yeah. They can they can afford extra jam. Bready, <laughs> savory, you know, rich I, butter. You know, I remember jam on top. growing up poor. <laughs> you grew up poor. Growing up poor is a thing where, like, I was in, uh, I moved to California, I got a roommate, and we were making eggs, and he poured, uh, like, a cup full of half and half into the scrambled egg pan. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's disgusting. He's like, no, it makes fluffier, richer eggs. And I'm like, "That's I, who puts milk in a, in eggs. Right. And then I tried them, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, how did I only just now hear about this? And then I asked my mom and she was like, we couldn't afford to pour our milk into our eggs. <laughs> <laughs> we had to have the milk separate. <laughs> yeah, we, we were, uh, we were milk rich. Yeah, you were milk, you had we all were, kinds of milk for days. Yeah, that's your little fork. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then it was the same thing with jam. It's like, you get buttered toast, and really, you get margarine because it's cheaper. You know, right. like I can't like country crock. And then you get jam, but all you get is like one knife of jam, mm. and you better make that shit spread across the whole slice because you weren't getting any more. <laughs> and on the knife, it's like there's any yeah. left, you're going back. You That's right. <laughs> you eat, just lick the knife. But this is like no, this was from a wealthy family who has just had jam for days. This is 46 percent. Now I think uh, your, your your whiskey friends, they're ready to step it up from a lot of entry level whiskeys. Mm -hmm. If you think they're prepared to jump up 6% in the alcohol, this is going to unlock a whole nother level of flavors. Start them with a classic Red Breast 12, and then introduce them to what happens to Irish whiskey when sherry is involved. Yeah. Oh, so All right. Great. We're getting a little bit more interesting. Mm. Are you ready? We got three more. This video, we're just trying, I'm just trying to deliver, you guys. Just trying to deliver. Oh, as promised. Wait, wait, wait. Now, it's like, uh, Red Breast is my love language. Green spot is my Irish love language. Yeah. Yeah. Because it reminds me of being a kid on South Padre Island on the beach in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm hmm. Now, they're very different whiskeys, too. No, very different. So, that's the dump glass. Which goes to show how Irish whiskey sometimes gets a rep for being relatively simple and straightforward uh, when, it turn, when it goes to like the spectrum of flavors that are possible. Scotch has a wide range of things. And I still that think that's true. Yes, Scotch has a wide range. Bourbon, it's a narrower, narrower. I think bourbon range. and Irish are similar in they're, their They're narrow. very similar, but I think Irish whiskey may have a little bit of an edge. Very similar in terms of 
the, the, the spectrum, the, I agree. the variety of what's possible. But I, I agree. Irish may have a bit more variety that's possible. And I don't think there's a better comparison from the ends of that spectrum than red breast on one side, green spot on another. Yes, I agree. And so in green spot, you've got uh, Middleton making, yeah. who also makes red breast, by the way. Yeah. You've got Middleton making green spot for Mitchell and Sons, is dates back to the early 1800s. Yeah. Uh, which is a merchant. They were just sourcing things and bottling, and they were creating flavor profiles. They have different spots, a blue, yellow, red. Okay. To me, Green Spot has, this is the most complex because I've been able to discover, you're still there. <laughs> I've been able to discover weird things in this one. So, salt water, uh, coconut, mm -hmm. and the same buttered biscuit. Really? You get butter biscuit on this? I do, but it's way behind the coconut mm -hmm. and salt water. This one to me, I always and recommend. Green this one I always recommend as a go-to starter whiskey because I think the flavors are so clean cut. Oh yeah. I always get like unripe banana, red berries, yes. brown sugar, and cream. That's my. I, that's Man, my when you said red berries, you know it just popped in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, Cap and berry crunch cereal. That kind of like sweetened cereal, red. No, the unripe banana nailed it for me just now. I have never heard that with I mean, this until now, and now yeah. that you said it, yeah, yeah. Just I can't right. unsmell yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Dang it. good starter whiskey. Nice work. Not necessarily Dolan. for the price point though, because this is like uh, like with the eighties, nineties. No, 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 no. no. Green, new yellow is in the eighties, nineties. Oh, yes. yes. Green spots in the forties to sixties, depending yes. on which shop you find it in. I'm right. taking a white spot. It's like a hundred bucks for me to get the white. Well, just keep telling yourself <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're about to get about to get real. Are you ready? Mm. We're gonna do Middleton. Very rare. Next. One. I feel like so we just went. This oh, is a Middleton it, Distillery. Oh, we need a little. Well done, Green Spot. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Middleton, uh, you know that glass is going to taste amazing. We'll see. Uh, Middleton makes a lot of whiskey. So there was a point in Irish whiskey history where the uh, a combination of multiple things happened: economic collapse, uh, the famine, and prohibition in the U.S. All combined over a decade or so to just wipe out the Irish whiskey. At one point, there were almost a, uh, there were hundreds of Irish whiskey distilleries, and by the time it collapsed, it ended up in one, which was the Irish Distillers Limited Company, mm -hmm. who owned all production in, in, in all of Ireland, uh, and including they bought out Bushmills even at one point, yeah. who was a holdout for a little while. Hmm. And um, so Middleton has become the distillery that produces, it's sort of like MGP. When you go to the shelf and you see all these bourbons and like a third of them are MGP sourced whiskeys. Yeah. And Middleton is that for Ireland. Okay. Which is you go to the Irish whiskey shelf and you see Hellcat Maggie and all these different Clontarf, you know, yeah. and and then you're like, oh, it's all Middleton, yeah. right? So, so this is- Now the good news is that's changing. Hold on. The, so, Ireland is under a whiskey boom so was, right now. So was that Middleton actually just Voted up as a hey, Middleton yes. is huge, but that's yes. the one that you want to Middleton to. very rare was voted up. Very rare. Yep. Okay. Fine. Now, or the Barry Crockett, but I chose the very rare of those two. So Barry Crockett was the head distiller who chooses what goes into the Middleton very rare. Oh. Now this, it's actually in the town Middleton, which is obviously where the distillery's name comes from. This is be between 12 and 20 years old, depending on the barrels. Right, they blend them together to get, and they're hand selected by Crockett. All right, I'm starting to get the buttery note. This is, uh, and then this is, it's like this a, is conjecture. It's a grainy buttery note for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is conjecture, but I, I would say Middleton Very Rare is probably one of the most expensive Irish whiskeys consistently on the market. Yeah, but it's, it's really, if you had to pick like the priciest Irish whiskey, really, on a consistent basis, as opposed to the unicorns, it's, it's, it's going to be yeah. Middleton Very Rare. It's Ireland's Johnny Walker Blue. It's that yes. premier uh, gig, that gifting whiskey. Yeah, that was such a perfect analogy. Okay. Yes, Ireland's that's exactly Johnny what it is. Blue. Okay. Now it's because I, I was about to ask. This is forty percent, and you usually don't see it is. You usually don't see a lot of fanfare, a lot of love for the forty percent. But in the context of a Johnny Walker, it's like oh, it's just wildly popular, and it's there's not a lot to hate about it. To me, this is just um, the more I live, it's drinkable. The more I live in the nose, the more that classic butter note is just getting. Yeah, to me, this mm. is the quintessential character of Irish whiskey. Mm. No flair, no fanfare, yeah. no extra little tendrils being yeah, pushed out. It's a, it's just 
It's a quite a normal whiskey. Yes. But held for a little longer because you get those sort of dusty woody notes. Yes. And a little hint of smoke from the barrel. This is the spirit of all Irish whiskey. Yeah. At its finest. Okay, I would say. With no weird variances. If you like what's going on in this bottle, mm -hmm. then a bottle of red breast. Yep. You will adore yeah, I taking totally agree. this and then just amping up the volume. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Now, th yeah, to me, this this should be just the ambassador of Irish whiskey, yeah. of classic Irish whiskey. Mm. Right here. That's it. Son of a bitch. How do you <laughs> give give us an Irish? Curse. Sunny, B yeah. What's an Irish curse? Oh, you, you couldn't put them on the show. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We no, no, have court it. noises. Yeah, it's okay. good. How long can you make it? Are your parents watching? Thirty seconds. Think, no. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> Anyone that met me here heard them. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so is that everything? No, we got one more from Teeling. Oh, oh and oh, you're gonna be excited about this one, and we go out on this one. Are you ready? Sure. How are we doing so far, Irishman? I think we're doing okay so far. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> just okay. Just okay so far. Right. Oh, come yeah. on. Do it right. A fern tain of hair, fern of hair. No, no, you're gonna wanna. You know what? F this. Let's get three new glasses. Because this from Pegine Riley mm -hmm. was a gift. Pegine Riley. Pegine Riley. Should I bastard her? Oh no, she she we already has been. But I mean, feel free. But this is. Well, a now you ruined it. Like there was there was good momentum. We were we were d d diving in. No, we're gonna end with this. Magnificent bastard. Like, well, if you really want to. No, we're gonna end with the memory of her father in whom this was purchased. Oh yeah, all right. But uh, this is a 25-year-old Teeling release. Damn. Good on you, Pegine Riley, in memory of your father. It has an Ooh, what is almost barrel musty note. Musty? I'm getting like a first thing. It was peach. Like a yes, peach, yes. peach, peach. Thing peach tea. Absolutely, peach tea. Yes, peach tea. You're right. It really yeah. is peach tea. Yes. Because it has that slight bitterness that tea will give. Wow, this is alcoholic peach tea. Yeah. yeah this is bottle 175. I'm trying, I'm trying to find something else. Now, bottle 175 of 250 bottles, cask 10505, bottled on July 13th, 2015. Okay, I'm overwhelming my nose right now. This, wow. So, what was the thing where if you're trying to reset your. You, your elbow, your your personal skin. Right. That's your nose is zero. Just smells like, not coffee beans. That's bullshit. It just smells like hard man. <laughs> <laughs> you see what it's like. Yeah. You see you see what I deal uh, with here. I don't know how you do it. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a crucible. Oh wow! Well, now I'm getting some more uh, lighter fruit notes in there. Yeah. What's that? Lighter fruit notes because peach tea. The tea was a good note. That when you said tea and pear, that brings out all yes. of the black tea notes. Yeah. Uh, peach tea and pear. So here's what I'm gonna say about Irish whiskey. I'll help you. Get in. There. I think. Get in there. <laughs> Just dive in. Irish whiskey <laughs> is one of the most underrated categories. Uh, bourbon people love it and they get it. Yeah. But Irish whiskey, I think, uh, doesn't get its fair share in the in it its ability in nuance and subtlety. Yes, and I think that's just it. Whereas with scotch, the spectrum is obvious. And we yeah. love scotch. We love scotch. But you don't have to go hunting. Uh, but it's it's the more advanced drinker that's going to be able to pick out a lot of these these notes that for a lot of people would just kind of fly past them. As, Irish whiskey makes you work for it. Yeah, it, it would just fly past them as like friendly and kind of sweet and almost like a, a shortbread cookie type of vibe going on there. There's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of complexity. But you have to... I have to be able to pick those flavors out. So yes. if somebody is starting to get into whiskey, how should they uh, go down that path of being able to identify those flavors? Because I know for a lot of people, it's like, man, I don't know if I'm even equipped to be able to It's just find. practice. And I think you were right when you said that the right entryway into scotch is going to be red breast 12, mm -hmm. or and into Irish whiskey is red breast 12, uh, and then followed by green spot. Mm -hmm. Because they're two totally different sides of the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and unlike scotch, which is what was in my head, yeah, um, it's not obvious. Oh, peat. Oh, butterscotch. Oh, so yeah. salt my, water. My understanding is to be able to pick out those notes, those flavors. It's practice, yes. just to get the context. Practice and repetition. Practice and repetition, but also uh, the willingness to just have a flash of a memory of an experience come into your head and be willing to say it. Because so many people, yeah. they're intimidated. Like they are. Well, I'm. 
smelling something is kind of like a peach tea, but I don't know if that's right. You so know what you shut do? Up and they don't say anything. Drink Irish whiskey with friends. That's yeah, the way Irish whiskey was with meant to be consumed. With non-judgmental friends. Yes, friends who are willing to say what they think they smell, Yes. and then you go in and look for it. Yeah, and, and the thing about smelling and tasting is it's very subjective. There's not a right or wrong answer per se. Uh, and that's what the Whiskey Tribe is all about. Um, whiskey snobbery, it's kind of like, yeah, you're not really going to get invited into the community. Man, that's good. But magnificent bastards who believe that the best whiskey is what? The whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. Yes, if you want to join us in the Whiskey Tribe, check out whiskeytribe.com. This has been the top 10 advanced whiskeys for whiskey drinkers that have been butt smuggled by Terry Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, if you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.